The world runs on data. Every hour, every minute, every second, data is being collected, including data on you. Don't believe me? Think about all the time it took you to get to this event tonight. You probably had to pick up your phone. You probably had to turn off your TV. You probably had to call a ride sharing service, or maybe you drived here. In each of these small things, data is being collected about you. Matter of fact, a handful of companies are collecting and letting that data work and continue to work for them. And my question is, if these organizations recognize how valuable data is, if data is such an asset, if data is a new oil, then why isn't this data working for you? How can we make data work for the people? So, I'm a technologist. I spent a decade working and building software with data teams, working hard on making some of the same problems happen a little bit better. And it's always the same, right? It's how do we make the data help us to become more efficient? How do we help use the data to make us more safe? How do we use the data to make us more compliant? How do we leverage data to make us sustainable? And all the time that I've been doing these projects, I've always asked myself, how do we make this data help the public? It troubled me, so I organized a group of colleagues, and we got together in Miami and South Florida, and generally through, throughout the counties, and we did something. We, we, we assembled a group that did two things. We got technologists who love to code and make their code public. We got public data, data that's open to everybody else, and what we did is we built apps that solved problems in the public that we thought really need to be met. One particular app that we built was around public safety. It was around police misconduct data. So for those of you in the crowd may not know, but every time you go across a police officer and you file a complaint on something that they've probably done to you, this goes somewhere. It's actually collected in some place. Here are all the states that it's available actually in public, including Florida. It's even ranked and you can see how many incidents or the type of incidents. We built an app that made it easier for people to search through this just like going on a search tool that you probably use all the time. And what we saw from this is incredible feedback. Thousands of users within the first couple of weeks were like, wow, this is such a public service. Wow, I'd really pay for something like this. Wow, this is really helping me, or it could have helped me when I was going through this particular scenario and looking for this information. And the problem was all this data was already available. It's just it wasn't accessible. It wasn't usable. People didn't know how to get it. What we did in this group is we continued building apps like this. We did it for tracking flooding, air quality. And what we found is when you bring people together and you ask them for their permission around their data, and you give them a good reason behind it, they can get together and you can do some amazing stuff. Now, data is a tool. It can be used for good and it can be used for bad. Some of the bad things we already know include surveillance. This is probably uh, you know, some footage of you guys coming to this event, but <laughs> surveillance is happening, and cameras are out there, and videos are out there, and they're able to get really granular about little details behind our life, right? They can tell who you are, your gender, or determine what the gender may be, and they look at all these different things, and oftentimes this happens without our permission. Imagine walking down the block and a camera just take a photo of you and just be like, okay, we know who you are, where you live, what's your Instagram, what's your Twitter, where you're gonna go, where you're gonna take a trip. How do we opt out of this? What we're seeing is governments organizing and creating standards around this. And we've already seen some type of regulations around this, right? We've seen it in healthcare, right? If you've gone to the doctor, you probably had to sign some papers related to your Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, HEPA that specifically states that you're giving them and you're making this legal agreement that they can't use your information without your consent, right? Otherwise, people would be targeting you and saying, hey, we know all the data that's being collected in this health, electric health record on all your visits, let's target you with these ads, or let's target you with this particular product. You also see this in social media and online web presence. Europe created something called the General Data Privacy Regulation. It's called GDPR. With it, now, 
if you go on any websites or applications, you now can do three things. One, they have to ask you for permission to use your data. Two, you can request this data and get it all in one file. Three, you can even delete this data, making sure they never collect or keep or retain it on your information. We even see this on our phones. If you own an iPhone, for example, there's this new policy in place that lets you know all the things that are tracking you. And it's really interesting, right? Because before you didn't know that the app that you thought was supposed to help you with maybe something related to like social media was also listening, onto, um, listening into you in every moment of your life. And maybe you're like, oh, that's kind of creepy. Let me turn that off. These things are putting us in power of deciding how our data is being used. It's also happening all across the world. Data ownership and making data work for you is happening in multiple countries, in fact. Imagine a network of countries where people get to own their data, where they get to set up and provide services for ownership of their data, and they get to determine how it's actually helping them in terms of how much money they're making from that. We see this actually happening today. So this map that I'm showing you here is about 800,000 hotspots in a decentralized network that is essentially decentralizing how telecommunication companies work, right? If you have a cell phone today, it's the same. You go to a telecommun telecommunication company, you ask for a box, they give you the box, they set it up. You may not like the service, but you can't switch. You don't know what to do. So this company was just like, okay, let's give people the chance to buy their own hotspots, set up their own service, and if they provide it and they give good coverage in the areas that they think, we'll pay them. Except they're not paying them in dollars. They're paying them in tokens. They're paying them in cryptocurrency. And 800,000 hotspots are up. Over 200,000 people have subscribed to this network. Now imagine what happens if you apply this model to other things. You know? You're driving your car. You get paid for that data. You're setting up a 5G network. You're getting paid for that data. There's so many different things to apply this type of model to. So I want you to reimagine with me the first scenario. So you're coming to this event. You pick up your smartphone. Your smartphone says, hey, we want to get some data on the last things you've looked at on social media, the last things you browsed on. And guess what? We're going to pay you. We're going to give you money that goes directly to your account. You say, yeah, that doesn't sound like a bad deal. I'll give you my data if I get paid, right? You go to your smart TV. You turn it off. And as you turn it off, it gives you an alert. It says, hey, you want to know the last couple movies you watched with your friends for the last month, and we'll pay you some money for this. You say, yeah, that's not too bad. I'll, I'll do that as well. You drive in your car, or you take a ride-sharing service, and something pings you and says, hey, we want to get access to this data because we want to know about all the places you've been to, and we'll pay you. You say, OK, I'll probably do that as well. Now, just like you have a job and you probably get a check for that job, you can look at line items and say, hey, based off all the data services that I've signed up to and given my data to, I'm making X, Y, Z. Data is working for you. This is already happening in cryptocurrency. And we expect this to continue happening across different markets and different places, where people begin to not only have access to being able to consent to their data and how it's used, but also consent and understanding to opt out of specific services. In the past, you were the product. You use these services, they give it to free, and they would take your data without your consent. Today, in the future, it's going to be about you owning your data, data truly working for you. Thank you. Thank you.